Hi, this is Steve from Pixelbump. Welcome to the Cinema 4D tutorial on Dynamics as I used it in the Geek and Sundry video for Geek Week, Gastro Geek. That's a gaggle of geeks. So here's what we're going to learn how to create. It's a nice simple animation that I used for the Geek Week show. So what are dynamics? Dynamics are a procedural animation that you set up inside the computer that simulates real-world physics. It allows you to do complex and realistic motion for single or large volumes of objects that would interact with each other. As you can imagine, the intricacies of animating something with very realistic and very subtle movement can be very time-consuming and difficult, so dynamics gives us a nice shortcut to add that kind of motion to our animations. Here we have an example setup of a cube rolling down a flight of stairs just to give a quick overview. So to set up dynamics in Cinema 4D, we're going to need to add some simulation tags. The first one I'll add to this cube is a rigid body. And this cloner for the stairs, I'm just going to add a collider body. Now we're going to get more in depth with this but I just want to show you really quick. I need to add the tag to all of the children objects, so that way every one of these stairs will become a dynamic collider. Now, if I just go ahead and hit play, not very exciting. So there's two ways to kind of deal with this, which is to delete the tag off of the cube, come in, rotate it up a little bit, maybe change its height, re-add the rigid body tag and hit play and there we get some nicer motion or what we can do delete that tag let's zero everything back out to where it was move it back up over the stairs re-add our simulation tag again and instead of changing its position, to give it a better animation, what we're going to do is we're going to play with the custom initial velocity. And this is an XYZ, XYZ for both position and rotation. So here, let's give it a little bit more jump at the beginning and a little more rotation and hit play. And now we have a much more complex, much more interesting animation happening. So how did I use this for Gastro Geek? Here you'll see we have that axe coming down and splitting that orange in two. And it could have been keyframe animated, but I wanted to use dynamics so that it would have every chance of having more realistic, more beautiful motion than I would think to add in the keyframes. Now, I can't give you this scene from Gastro Geek as it is. There's a lot of models in here that I bought off of stock libraries, and I don't have the ability to give them to you. But what I've done is set up a test scene. But here I have the exact same scene, the exact same scale, the exact same setup that you can use on your own. Now, the first thing we want to do when we talk about dynamics is talk about scale. And a lot of times when people set up a scene, They'll add in a object, like here's the default cube in Cinema 4D, and then start working from there. Then they'll start trying to figure out why their dynamics don't look right. They're either looking too fast, too slow, something's just really wrong about it. And what they don't consider is the scale of the scene. So this cube is about six and a half feet at its default size. This cube here is 200 feet. Now, if you're trying to do something falling off a large building, you really want it much closer in scale to this 200 feet than you would at 6 feet. This is only a little taller than a very tall person. This is several stories high, so if you want something falling from a great distance, you actually have to build it at that great distance in the computer. The computer wants to use real-world physics to solve the dynamic motion. So if you're shortchanging the dynamic engine, it's not going to know what to do and you're going to try to make all these adjustments when if you had just created the scene at the correct scale, you'd be in much better shape to begin with. So let's talk about some of the setup options. If you hit Control D, it'll bring up your project settings. And under project settings, there's a tab for dynamics. 
and under the tab for Dynamics, you have General, Cache, Expert, and Visualization. And here you're going to see you have your Time Scale and your Gravity Scale. Now both of these are set to that real world scale. So your time scale is at 100% and your gravity is at 1,000 centimeters. And 1,000 centimeters simulates real world gravity. The density is set to one and the air density is set to one. As long as you set your scene scale up correctly, these settings should work 99% of the time. The cache tab shows where you'll bake out your animations. Because the dynamics are calculated real time in your scene, once you have them working the way you want, you don't want to spend the extra computer power every time you play through. So it's best to come in and bake your simulation, write it out to frames, so that way the computer is reading it as if it were a keyframe animation. The last two tabs here are the Expert tab and the Visualization tab. Visualization is used for error checking or to see if there's something really going wrong, you can see exactly what's happening with the dynamics. The expert tab has things like collision, the scene scale, and how many times it's going to try to calculate per frame. So right now it's set to five. So every frame it's going to try to run it five times to understand if the motion is correct. If you don't have something working correctly in your scene, if your scene scale is set correctly, and your objects are set correctly, but the animation is not what you expect, sometimes coming in and increasing the steps per frame or the maximum solver iterations per step are going to solve that problem for you. So how would you set up something like this? The first thing I'm gonna do is come into the Geo Group, and the Geo Group holds every object in this scene. So the orange, which is just a sphere that has been cut in half, I want to come in and add a simulation tag to them. By right clicking and going down the menu I see simulation tags and I'm going to add them to be a rigid body. A rigid body is something that is going to bounce around and interact with everything in the scene in a dynamic way. If you add a soft body it's going to be more like jello. It'll interact and animate but it will also deform the geometry as it does it. Then there's a collider body. It's an object that will interact with the rigid body objects, but it won't have animation on its own. And finally, we have the ghost body, which is similar to the collider body, and we'll get into that, the cloth belt, the cloth collider, and cloth tags in another tutorial. All right, so the first thing I wanna do is pull these orange halves out of my geo group. And the reason I'm gonna do this is I just wanna use as few tags as possible. So on my orange tags, I'm gonna come down to simulation, I'm gonna add a rigid body. And then to the geo group, I'm gonna come down to simulation and add a collider body. Now like I did in the first part, I wanna come down to my collision tab. I'm gonna use the inherent tag to apply that collider body to all of the children. Now everything under here has become a collider body. And as far as setup goes, that's about it. Let's go ahead and run it through just to see what happens. And beautiful, nice, dynamic motion. Keyframing that would have taken me a little while, but not exactly the effect I want. Usually I'll run the dynamics without any tweaks the first time just to see what happens. Sometimes you're gonna get surprised. Sometimes you're gonna see something that'll spark another idea. It's always good to just show what the computer shows you just in case something amazing can come out of it. So what I wanted to do is when the axe hits, I want it to split. Now it's splitting from the minute it starts. And the reason it's doing that is I have the dynamics set to trigger immediately. Now I could have them trigger on collision with the axe. Let's run it back and see what happens there. Again, that's an interesting result. And if I was doing something like chopping firewood, this may be more useful, but it's still not what I want yet. So let's take it back from collision to immediately. But what we're gonna do is come in and find the frame of where it should start splitting. And that looks right here at frame 22. So what I'm gonna do, keyframe at frame 22, the dynamics to be on. I'm gonna hold down my control key and add a keyframe. Then I'm gonna back up one keyframe 
and turn my dynamics off and add a keyframe. Now when I run the animation, it doesn't start until the axe hits and it looks like the axe is actually splitting the orange. And this again is starting to look really nice. It's got some great motion in it, but I'd like to give it a little more force. That axe is coming down pretty fast. So here I'm gonna come back again to my custom initial velocity. And in this case, let's go ahead and add a little X motion and see what that brings us. That's pretty cool. How about a little bit of jump? And here, you just want to keep adding until you start seeing the results you're looking for. Okay, too much. But again, don't ever worry about adding too much. Let's come back and knock that way back down. You're never going to break it by adding a setting too high. There we go. Now they're splitting apart nice and fast. That's more of what I'm looking for. Let's see what happens if we add a little more angular velocity. Let's go ahead and add 90 degrees to the X, Y, and Z. Really get them to start spinning around. Well, not enough. Let's try 360 and see what happens. There we go. Now it's doing something fun. Now it's not only splitting, it's starting to spin really nicely in a very interesting way, adding a lot of extra beautiful motion to the scene. So finally, let's jump over to the project tab again and let's cache this animation out. I'm gonna go ahead and hit bake it calculates and it's done and now when I play through it's reading that animation from the disk it's no longer calculating real time so that allows me to come in and scrub through the timeline just like you would with keyframe animation to see if there's anything in here that maybe I want to tweak but I think this is looking pretty good but since we're here let's go ahead and change some of the properties here just so you can see what that does. So I'm going to change my gravity to a quarter gravity and you're going to see a big difference. Now if I had set my scene scale wrong I may need gravity to work a lot slower but since my scene was set up correctly this looks really funny and odd. Now there could be reasons to go ahead and add less gravity maybe you want to simulate something in outer space. Anything here on Earth you're going to want to keep this the same. Let's go ahead and change the time scale as well. Let's quarter that. And now the gravity's working, just working a lot slower. So you can see that when you have to come in and start messing with the time scale and the gravity, you may already have lost the battle of trying to get nice realistic motion out of your dynamics. Let's play it through again just to look at the difference between the overly slow motion and the correct real world motion. And I think you're going to agree that the real world motion looks a lot better. Okay, I hope you've enjoyed this introduction to Dynamics and Cinema 4D. It can do a lot more and we're going to explore that in future tutorials, working with MoGraph and working with particles. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I hope you've learned something that you can use in your work. If you have any questions, please hit me up on Twitter, or Facebook, or in the comments. Thanks so much for watching. Go and create.